Hello everyone, my name is Michael Pfaff, here with my colleague Craig Stickelmeyer, and we are with Risk Management Professionals. We at Risk Management Professionals provide high quality consulting and technical services for your PSM and RMP needs. Today we will be covering how to get the most use and benefits from your PHA Pro software and provide value not only for regulatory requirements in PHAs, but also some other elements of your company's PSM program as well. In addition, we will be covering some tips and helpful how-tos using PHA Pro to easily access and organize information you need for your program. This video, along with the rest of our webinars, are available at our website, rmpcorp.com. There you will find our contact information, more useful information on RMP and PSM elements, and services we at RMP provide. So you have PHA Pro. It's expensive and you want to get as much use out of it as you can to make it as worth it worth its cost. You got it to track and complete PHAs, so let's go over some elements that regulating bodies may want to see. All right, so first we have here the administration tab, and this is just the general PHA Pro template that they come with, um, and it's just the regular one that you open it up, you select new template, and here it is. So looking at your administrative tab, you have general, and you can input all your information here. So your facility, facility ID, project ID, if you're doing a certain unit, um, start date, end date of the study, and so that you can track how long it takes for future use, scope and objective, so what unit or are you covering your whole, your whole um, program, assumptions, RMP and PSM have assumptions listed on the, uh, on the regulations, so you can list either that section or you can uh, list the assumptions that you're making and whether you're taking them as valid or not for, for your business. Team members. So attendance, they want to know if you have the right people to comply with their regulations. Um, so PHA Pro, Pro out of the box has these tabs, sessions, team members, and attendance. So you put down the people that are required to be there per regulations. So you'll have your engineer, your operations, your maintenance, people like that that are required to be there. And you can also have your different session days. So if you have a large process, you can go through and implement the amount of days that it takes you, the duration of the days, and what you actually did each day. You'll also input the facilitator and your leader and the scribe. So if it's the facilitator, it would be that, that person again. Or if you have a dedicated scribe for what you're doing, you'll put their name in there as well. Then attendance. So each session will, show, will populate when you go through it and if you have multiple days. And so will the team members. Where these question marks are, you'll have your team members' names populate across. You can show if they were if they were present or not, and the amount of hours that, it that they were there. So it could be partial full attendance or they were not there at all. Going forward, you can also populate some PNID references. So here we've started pre-populating some PNID references uh, for our uh, possible HAZOP and, and LOPA uh, scenarios that we've created for this webinar. Study revision history. So this is also great that you can track your study revisions and uh, how far, how many times you've looked at your process before. Another very important part of PHAs and tracking is your recommendations. So regulators want to see these recommendations closed out in a timely manner. So within PHA Pro, again, this is the very basic template that comes with it. You have your HACCP recommendations summary, your recommendations list, recommendations details, and it all put together in the details sheet. So this is very unique, and it's 
I'd say it's a little bit better than Excel tracking because you have all the information right at your fingertips right here one software and in here you have your recommendations you can have the responsibility it's places used within the study and you'll be able to show the risk ranking right next to it so you can be able to uh, basically put it in hierarchy of the most risk to least risk to figure out and prioritize okay which ones do I want to spend my money on first which ones are the highest risks that I should close out the soonest and here you can track the due date um, the recommendation status the cost com who's completed by who's approved by and all that information again you can do this all in Excel but this kind of puts it in one place where you can quickly go to the scenario where it is go to the scenario where it is you can review what could possibly go wrong why you need to you know reduce that risk and it basically helps you track every portion of the recommendation now going forward um, another thing that should be tracked within your PHA Pro file is MOCs and incidents so you don't have to track it in here again Excel can do a fine job people can all access it and well in here it's you know you'll have your license and only the one person can access it at a time but here it's good to keep it with the PHA so that you can figure out the previous incidents so you'll be able to see what went wrong previously and how you're currently mitigating it and your MOCs since the previous HAZOP. So what has changed? And what do you need to look at that's new uh, within your study? So you'll, you can be doing a revalidation and all you really need to do is look at your MOCs and kind of revalidate the other scenarios and then take a closer look at what has changed. But this isn't part of the template coming into it. So let's look at how I made this tab and how you can make it as well so we go into settings so we had it in the administration tab here we add a worksheet to it we can call it MOCs and incidents 2 and this is just a random name that I'm giving it um, it's the second one, you know, I'm showing how we're doing this. Go next. And then there's all these elements that we can add. So this is a general way to make new uh, tabs and sheets within your PHA profile as well. But we're looking at HAZOP for here and MOCs and previous incidents. So I'll just go ahead and select all of these. MOC number, date, description, comments, incident number. So if you have an incident tracking system, you want to put in the numbers that you use, numbers of letters, the description, the date, the comments, what happened, whatever you want to put in there. So these are headers. These are, they'll be at the very top of the page, sort of. They, you won't be able to populate them. Uh, they'll just be there to uh, have extra information I don't find them completely useful all the time but moving forward and then um, the breakdown of the sheet finally and you press finish so we just made a new tab within administration for tracking MOC's and incidents so if we go over here here it is the new tab and then we can populate all this information so let's say 7A2 incident description a leak we have the date 7 3 2014 something 2015 something just random and you can implement how how it happened and then MOCs uh, so you can give them a number a date description comments so this is a very useful item and also a useful way to add information that you find necessary 
So again, this is completely customizable. Uh, it's a hierarchy of information that you can add anywhere within this PHA Pro software. It's highly customizable and highly useful. Moving forward, another way you can customize your PHA Pro template is implementing your risk ranking matrix. This, along with other standards, can easily be shown within the file. So to change up the risk ma ranking matrix, we'll want to go to the settings again. And so we can go to the risk systems. And here you see we have severity, likelihood, and the risk ranking. So we can customize the severity and the values that we have here. So if your facility or corporation has different standards that they like to follow for what's the most severe or what's the least severe uh, as well as likelihood, you can easily change what the values are here, the descriptions, and also you can change what happens uh, what happens when you change the when you add the different uh, values by changing these ifs and where statements and so if we look at here we can easily change multiple fatalities to say a single fatality so we can also change this for all the different types of consequences that are can occur so looking at the environment or some public impact that you have. And the bottom line is that this is highly customizable where you can be flexible to policy changes internally and also externally. So regulation driven and uh, other factors like that. That's it for some basics on how to satisfy some regulatory requirements for your PHA and more generally your PSM program using PHA Pro. Now, Craig will take us to another element, the MI program, and how PHA Pro can streamline parts of tracking this information. Additionally, he will show us how we increase the usefulness of our PHA Pro worksheets and how we can best export this information for others to use. Craig? All right. Thank you, Michael. And so when you think about a HAZOP uh, and two things that are pivotal as part of a HAZOP, one is that you identify key failure modes in terms of the causes that are identified within a HAZOP and you also identify when a safety feature is needed or when it's missing and if you apply those two, those two ideas to a mechanical integrity program that is already a good basis for a well integrated um, MI program and so the, the importance of, of those two ideas is that you're already doing them as part of the HAZOP and if you can document the HAZOP in, in, in a, in a in a clean and, and uh, well-organized manner, it's easy to apply it to your mechanical integrity program. Uh, when you think about a HAZOP, you're, you're, doing, you're looking at things in a scenario-based and risk-driven context, and that is a great basis for making stuff, on, or making stuff um, vital to your mechanical integrity program. Uh, when you're looking at it, when, when it's risk-based, it has reason to be on the mechanical integrity program, and when it's risk-based, it also shows that it might not have any reason to be on the mechanical integrity program. Uh, and I'll get into that later, but for example, if you have something with a high severity consequence, um, you know, you definitely want to, you're deficient in your MI program, you definitely want to add that to your MI program. If you have something that is a low severity consequence, maybe you can deprioritize that and getting it on, and getting it on the mechanical integrity program and focus on the higher priority ones. Or if it's a low enough severity, maybe you don't need to add it to the mechanical integrity program at all. And thus you are lowering, you know, any kind of recurring MI costs that you might have with associated with lower severity, either safeguards or equipment or stuff like that. And so all this information and all this kind of, of thinking is, is already done in your HAZOP. And if, it, like I said, if it's well documented and well organized, um, it, it's easy to implement into your mechanical integrity program. And so what I have here is um, in the worksheets, I have a list of safeguards here. And this is in the LOPA tab, as you notice, and these are IPLs, um, which stand for Independent Protection Layers. Um, they're basically safeguards that you take credit for in the LOPA, and th the reason why they're named differently is because the safeguards, are more, you, you have more rigorous considerations to take credit for a safeguard in a layer of protection analysis, but 
nonetheless, they are safeguards. And so we'll kind of go through what the columns here and the information that we have displayed on the screen in this, I, in this uh, safeguard summary list. And so, for example, we have here the description. And in the description, you can tell that I have the tag number, the pin ID number that, will, that it's located on. That way we can, for reference later, uh, this is very helpful when you're trying to search through all the information you have. And this is, of course, only four safeguards. You know, in some studies, you might have hundreds of safeguards. So it's important to keep um, organized with the pin ID numbers as well as the tag numbers so you can search for them later. Um, but you can see that I, in the description I have it's well documented um, what the intended function of the safeguard is. And this is a high level alarm and it's configured to alert operations with sufficient time for diagnosis and corrective action. Um, we have the tag number here, which I, like I said, we can, it'll be useful later for when we print this sheet, it'll print all these columns. And so if you print it to, for example, to Excel, which I'll go through later, you'll be able to filter by either tag number or any kind of column in here. Uh, and here we have our probability of failure on demand. And we have our IPL category, what kind of um, safeguard this is, whether it's an interlock, um, mechanical trip or you know pressure relief device. Here's a um, very useful column for specifically for what we're talking about right now, which is our mechanical integrity program being streamlined as part of your PHA Pro uh, worksheets. So we can document whether it's in the mechanical integrity program or it's not. Whether it's not, sorry, or whether it is in the mechanical integrity program, as you see here. Um, and so this is this will become handy later as obviously you want to if you have something that's deficient you would say that it's not in the mechanic mechanical teddy program and usually you would do this as part of the pha in order to streamline things later and and usually if you have a good you know psm program you'll have a, a good mechanical teddy program where you have stuff that is listed and you'll be able to search it up easily on the fly um if 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 that is not the case this is still a place where you can you know, if you're sure whether something's on the met my program, for example, a PSV or some sort of pressure relief device, um, this will, you know, this might have a higher chance to be on your mechanical integrity program. So you can document that here that you, you expect it to be in the MI program. But this is just a column so that you can document and search for later what is not and what is on the MI program. Um, we have the places that it's used within the study, which is very useful to link back to. You can see the actual description of the event for example, and, and what the risk ranking was and stuff like that. Um, as well as our, I've added this column actually, and, and like I said, or like Michael said before, is that these are very customizable worksheets and everything about PHA Pro is very customizable. You can add columns that you want. You can add information that you want to see. Um, you can even um, and you can even make up information that you would want to see on a column if it's not already made in PHA Pro template. For example, this is the generic template, but this column is what I added. Um, just in the settings. Um, and so this is very useful later as well for higher severity um, safe safeguards that are used with higher severities you would want to prioritize in your MI, MI program. You could also sort by what the initial event description was. Um, in this case, these are all the same causes. It's with this FV-0011 control valve malfunctioning open. But obviously, for example, in a study you might have you know, a lot of different causes for different things and safeguards might be used for more than one cause, for example, and that could be useful when you're trying to implement something in your mechanical integrity program as well. And so if you look at this, we have all this information in here, which can be very useful in its own way or even in together when formatted together, for example. First, we'll start with the MI program. Um, obviously, if something's not in the MI program, it's easy. You can just print this list. Um, like I said, I'll show that later. You can just print this list of all the ones that are not in the MI program and send that to whoever your MI rep is or MI personnel is. And that way it's just a streamline and you could, it'd be, it'll show up like this. You have every, every safeguard that's not in the MI program and they, they can just go from there and they, have a good, and they have a good description of what the safeguard is, where to find it on the PID if they want it to look at it. Um, they have the tag number as well, which I also, I also include in the description. Um, if you look at the consequence categories here, you'll see that this safeguard was used with the four severity event, four being fairly high severity, five being the highest, one being the lowest. You could also tell that this safeguard was used for this specific initiating event, uh, which is control valve failure. Um, some events might be more likely to happen than others, so it's good to know which, what kind of event this safeguard is used for or in what, kind of, what kind of case, what kind of scenario. And so 
these are all important for prioritizing your mechanical integrity program, which is a big thing in streamlining, you know, your both your PHA and your mechanical integrity program implementation. You want to make sure you can prioritize what goes on the mechanical integrity program first, what's more important to go on there. And in the same manner, you want to deprioritize things where if you see stuff that shouldn't be on the mechanical integrity program and is justified by the HAZOP here in the risk ranking, you don't need to include it while I spend the money on on, on putting it on the MI program and having maintenance and testing on it um, all the time. Uh, for example, this for severity uh, event has this safeguard associated with it. So it's a fairly high severity. We would want to consider probably putting this on the mechanical integrity program if it's not already. And we identified that it's not. For example, this lower severity event, if I go down to safeguard number number three or four, these are three severities, which is not as severe as four. Um, but for example, these were one severity to two severities where you know maybe you don't have much basis for having it on a mechanical integrity program, then maybe you can just either if, if it if it's not on the mechanical integrity program already, you could not add it and you could justify not adding it based on the low ra risk ranking that was identified in the HAZOP. And say if this safeguard for example, was used in in the mechanical integrity program already, or it's already included in the mechanical integrity program. But we identified that in the HAZOP, it was used for an event that was very low severity or very low risk ranking. Maybe you can justify taking this off the mechanical integrity program, and therefore you'd be lowering any lowering any kind of recurring MI costs associated with repeated testing or or maintenance on on the specific safeguard that was used in a hazard scenario that was fairly low risk. So here, with this, all the information on this on this screen here, it's huge in prioritizing and deprioritizing, and once again streamlining it, the effectiveness of your mechanical integrity program. So now let's go ahead and try to print from here, and I'll show you guys how to filter specific areas that you want to print, as well as the different print options you are given in PHA Pro. So take for example, if we wanted to give uh, someone a list of all the safeguards that are not yet included in the MI program. We could do that easily with filtering, and so let's go ahead and print our active sheet here. These are the different output types you can get. Uh, this print one being PDF, HTML being uh, you open this file with a web browser, and I actually use this a lot and fairly frequently. Uh, it's a very useful layout uh, as well as a very searchable and navigable layout and I can use it on the fly as a quick reference and I actually I actually use HTML files a lot when I'm facilitating PHAs I'll have it open on a separate screen and I can follow along with what we've been talking about earlier or follow along with a different study um, but it's, it's, it's very useful and uh, user-friendly layout for HTMLs. Word document is for obviously if you want to include stuff into a report for example um, you have that option text export is what you wanted to do if you wanted to print to Excel um, it prints as a .csv file format. In the case here where we're trying to print all this inf all this good information that might be useful for others later, I'd print from Excel or I'd print with this file format. That way whoever gets this information can filter it further in Excel. For example, if they wanted to filter by the IPL tag and they wanted to see all the PSVs that are not yet in the MI program, they could filter that in Excel further later on or if they wanted to filter for example, the, by the all the four severities, safeguards are used with all these four severities, they could filter that in Excel later on. Um, so certain certain uh, areas of, of the PHA Pro worksheets uh, were, are better suited for different print, out, print output options. And so say if we wanted to add our filter, and right, again, we wanted to add, or we wanted to print only the, only the safeguards that are not yet in the MI program. Obviously, we have one here that is in the MI program, so let's see if we can get a print that does not include that. So we're just in the filters tab here and what we want to filter by is this column, the information in this inspection, training, preventative maintenance information column. Okay, and then what do we want to print from this column? We want to print all the things that are not in the MI program. And if we select that, we can look at a preview of this and as you guys can see, we have safeguards one, three, and four Safeguard 2 is not included because it was in the MI program and all of these safeguards 1, 3, 4 are obviously not in the MI program yet. And so that filtering aspect is very powerful and it's especially useful in other areas of this BHA Pro worksheet. Say if you wanted to use, you wanted to print HAZOP worksheets and you only wanted to print certain areas of the HAZOP worksheets that included, for example, certain tag numbers or stuff like that. You can pretty much create whatever filter you want and it'll filter by whatever 
uh, wording or whatever kind of marker you use in, in the in the file. And so, especially for the LOPA for the LOPA stuff, if you guys have layer protection analysis um, worksheets, the filtering is especially useful there as well. And so, lastly. Uh, another program element or PSM program element that is able to be streamlined through the use of these PHA Pro worksheets while you're doing your PHA is is the process safety information and so when you're doing your PHA obviously you're looking at a bunch of different drawings uh, process safety information for example P9Ds or PFDs or cause and effect matrices all kinds of P process safety information and if you do a diligent job during your PHA of tracking for example, PID red lines. Uh, it could be very streamlined into how you can update your PSI to make sure it's up to date and accurate, which is one of the, one of your core standards of PSM. And so, the way we do that, or the way I like to do that, is through addition of markers in the PHA profile. And here you have different markers here where we have parking lots, but you can add this into any kind of uh, box, as, as a, if you will, in the PHA Pro worksheets. And you can add your own marker, and in it you can specify the date. You can specify what the parking lot item is. In this case, maybe it's red line this P and ID, P and ID, whatever it is. You can put who's responsible for the red lines, whether it's your drafting department or or, or whoever. Um, but whatever you log here gets tracked in a separate tab. And as you can see, we just made this one. Um, but it all gets tracked here and again this is a printable worksheet kind of how I went over before with the, the safeguard list you can print it in the same way uh, here you notice I have dead legs here and you know dead to dead legs may be important to you or w to your facility maybe not all facilities but uh, it's a good way to track you know, keep track of that we can have a, a, a set list of all the dead legs of all the red lines you could filter it like I explained before but as long as you do a dil diligent job during your PHA, I mean, the process safety information is another aspect of your PSM that could get streamlined through the use of the PHA Pro worksheets while completing your PHA. With that, we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to this webcast. And to kind of wrap things up, we talked about how you can get the most out of your PHA Pro file. And we kind of related that to how you can get the most out of your PHA. And if you do good documentation, now you can get the most out of your PHA profile by streamlining other aspects of your PSM program. And Michael earlier talked to you about how you can even satisfy certain regulation requirements and how you can create certain customizable worksheets within the PHA profile to kind of log the data that you want to log and that you want to show, whether it be to regulators or to other team members of the PHA. And if you guys want more information on kind of how the data sets are structured within the software and the kind of hierarchy that is followed within the PHA Pro software, I'd highly recommend referencing the user manual that comes with the software. And it, that does a really good job of explaining kind of how to create your own customizable sheets and in what order you want to structure the data. And if you guys want more information specifically on the topic of using HAZOP and LOPA to create an effective mechanical integrity program. That's actually a publication that we offer uh, for free on our website. If you go to www.rmpcorp.com and we go to our publications page here, you'll see that we have a number of publications on a number of different PSM RMP topics. And we highly encourage you guys to reference these as needed. They're all downloadable. So again, yeah, please feel free to reference these these topics. Um, they could be very useful for you guys. And with that being said, if there are any comments or concerns or any feedback, we'd love to hear it. Whether it's on this webcast or if you guys just want to figure out what kind of services we provide or you guys want to reach out to us for any kind of general questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Our phone numbers are on the websites here, our homepage. Or you could just shoot an email over to client.services at rmpcorp.com, and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. With that being said, thank you guys for tuning in to this webcast, and we hope to have you guys join us on our future webcasts upcoming.